How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Now, we have an off day today coming off a 5-0 win over the San Francisco Giants. We saw some really great performances. Garrett Cole's 11 strikeout, setting a Yankee record for opening day pitchers. Um, and, of course, Aaron Judge getting on the home run tally very early this season. He's on pace for 162 homers, which is very, very exciting. Cole's on pace for, like, a 1,000 strikeouts at this point. So we're certainly hyped um, about this Yankee team. Now, there's some things that we have have to get better with. Of course, we struck out ourselves 16 times, so we like to see a little bit more efficiency there. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say the umpire was a big reason for that. He was calling strikes that were balls the whole day. Oswaldo got called on a really bad one. There was some really just like, how the hell do you do that, man? Like, it's just so far outside of the strike zone. But after the game, the Yankees announced that they signed Colton Brewer. Former Boston Red Sox, spent time with the Tampa Bay Rays this spring, and he's been looking pretty good during spring training. We're going to break it down for you, break down his stuff. Um, Ryan's in the middle of editing a more comprehensive, uh, detailed breakdown of Colton Brewer, what he offers. So you'll be able to watch that hopefully within the next uh, day or two and get more information. But we want to give you more of a broadened um, perspective on Colton Brewer, what they're getting out of him. Now, he's on the 26-man roster. Interestingly, and I want to have a discussion about this, What's the point of going and signing Colton Brewer when you have Greg Weissert and Ian Hamilton? Like, they both looked solid. Like, Weissert, you know, had his up and downs, but Hamilton looked fantastic this spring. Why is Colton Brewer, who is a right-handed pitcher for what it's worth, you know, why is he on this team over Ian Hamilton? You know, I'll let you answer that because it is a little bit confusing. I mean, maybe it's some specific pitch sequence they prefer out of, out of uh, Colton. Maybe he had an even better spring. I'm curious to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, so in terms of a spring training, I think out of this group, Colton Brewer had the best one. With the Rays, he pitched nine and the third innings pitched. Um, scoreless as well, just like Ian Hamilton, but better strikeout to walk distribution. Both of them walked three guys this spring, but while Hamilton only struck out six batters, Brewer struck out 15 batters. Um, you know, and in terms of straight up stuff, um, his stuff plus is 115.2. So among that group of Hamilton, Crook, Weissert, and um, Brewer, he had the second best stuff plus behind Weissert. Now, we know Weissert's issue is Man, and his spring training wasn't excellent enough for us to sit here and say that, you know, he's significantly better than Colton Brewer. And then the most important thing here is you were going to have all three of those guys in the organization anyways. Now you have all three of those guys and you have Colton Brewer as well. So you just have more arms, right? Having more arms is not a bad thing, especially for this team. They are one injury away from needing, you know, not even an injury. They are one, you know, just minor thing, minor uh, issue away from needing one of those relievers. And Aaron Boone hinted at, you know, potentially going with a, a four-man rotation at times in April because of the scheduling. Um, and that means that you may not need Johnny Brito for a certain week. So they're probably not going to roster him. They'll probably just shuttle him down. You can shuttle up one of those three guys that we just mentioned. It keeps the Yankees bullpen flexible. It keeps the Yankees bullpen fresh. It gives the Yankees the ability to, to you know, have eight guys ready to go at any given night. Um, you know, end of the day, I, I think Colton Brewer has kind of a lot of the things the Yankees like. Um, he has a really good slider. It's like a baby sweeper. Uh, it's very similar to uh, Clark Schmidt's slider. Um, he has a really good cutter. Again, similar to Clark Schmidt's cutter. It's a hard cutter at 93.8 miles an hour. It gets a lot of called strikes and whiffs. Um, and then he has a pretty good curveball as well that he can use against left-handed batters. Uh, and it has plenty of vertical drop. Um, it'll work well against lefties. He's just got explosive stuff. And, you know, while it's not explosive in the velocity sense, it relies more on movement. Um, it, it's still certainly a really good arsenal. Um, I'm surprised that the Yankees were the first team that got their crack at Brewer because, um, you know, Brewer is someone that only didn't make the Rays bullpen because they he tried they tried to assign him the same way the Yankees tried to assign Ian Hamilton. Um, except Hamilton, ex he accepted his uh, being resigned, whereas Brewer had an opt-out uh, that was triggered by the reassignment uh, that allowed him to just hit free agency. So this explains why the Yankees had been, like, openly talking about a potential reliever they were bringing in, why they were straight up just carrying 14 position players uh, on opening day because they were confident they were going to get this deal done. I think they were just waiting for the Rays to officially reassign Brewer. Um, and now that it's, he was officially reassigned, and now that all that stuff is official, the Yankees now have him on the roster. I think it was a great pickup. I think that's a really interesting point. Like, they knew they were going to be signing him for a couple days. They were just waiting for it to kind of happen, um, which says a lot about their confidence in him and what they see. Uh, obviously, 
you're looking at Colton Brewer has probably some of the most experience out of the group that we've mentioned. Greg Weiser, Crook, obviously. Um, Hamilton, I believe, doesn't have a ton of MLB experience. He has some, but that was a couple of years ago, I believe. So specifically, um, he's pitched, I don't even know, like he's like up and down all the time. He had eight innings back in 2018, four innings in 2020. Um, then he had last year 2.2, so he barely has any MLB experience. Colton Brewer, on the other hand, has 91 total innings, 54.2 innings back in 2019 when the baseballs were juiced, and that was actually his best season with a 4.12 ERA. Um, he's never been like a high strikeout guy, which is kind of interesting. So it's really odd to see him striking out 15 batters uh, during spring training in less than 10 innings. Um, so you know, what, what do you think's changed there? Like, what what is going on with his pitches, um, or maybe what has he added? That has kind of helped, you know, bolster his numbers. He has a he has a really good slider. He has a cutter. He has a curveball. You know, what are you seeing from him in terms of his pitches that may be uh, valuable for this Yankee bullpen? Yeah, it's all about just the way he's sequencing. I think that his ability to use the slider primarily instead of using the cutter primarily is a big change. You know, his slider usage in 2020 was 20.8%. Now in spring training, it's up to 36.3%. He still frequents the cutter often, and the curveball's kind of dialed down its usage a little bit. But I think those are overall good things. You know, his slider is his best pitch in my eyes. Um, and the fact that he's going kind of with like an even usage of that in the cutter, um, I think is going to generate more whiffs. It's going to get him more strikeouts. I, it looks like he's got a little bit better command. Um, you know, overall, I, I think this is just the guy who had really good stuff and, you know, was able to harness that. Also, in 2020, we saw that his spin rates are actually lower than they've been in spring training, about by 200 RPMs on certain pitches. So he might just be healthier. Um, you know, he might just be, you know, feeling better than he has in the past. Maybe he did some work in the offseason with different uh, organizations. I don't know if he worked with Driveline or Tread Athletics. I didn't research that. Um, but he's definitely someone who's bolstered his arsenal. He's using his pitches better than ever. And I think, you know, the, the, the thing the Rays preach that the Yankees have begun to preach is just use your best pitches. And if you have a really good pitch, throw it and throw it often, right? So, you know, the, he's going out there and he's throwing his slider often. I think that's a good thing. He's aggressive in the zone, um, you know, and is he going to be a guy who you're going to expect to, you know, have a, you know, 2021 Clay Holmes type start? No, because that's just an unrealistic expectation. But can he come in here and give, you know, a three something ER? RA uh, in low leverage. Uh, yes. And maybe he climbs into a high leverage role. Who knows? Uh, but I think his stuff has improved. His pitch selection has improved and it's all kind of centered around his slider. Right. So I'll ask you this, you know, obviously they had him in mind. Um, my question is, we have a lot of guys coming back from injury at some point in the future. Tommy Canely obviously stands out. Lou Trevino, um, do you anticipate Colton Brewer like fighting his way and staying on this team? Because, you know, Johnny Brito, you know, when the starters come back, he probably gets sent back down or maybe he transitions to a long relief role. Uh, I just don't think we have space for him in the future. But for now, he can offer you a decent arm out of the bullpen to help you uh, while you're trying to supplement some of those deficiencies in the meantime. But do you think that once these guys start to get back into the group, do you think that they just send Colton Brewer back to AAA? Um, or do you think that maybe he can, you know, find a way to stay on this bullpen? Yeah, um, I think personally that, you know, we could see Colton Brewer stick around for a while. Um, Trevino and Canley are obviously the two guys that present some sort of uh, hurdle for that. Um, but, you know, if he's pitching well, the Yankees aren't going to release him. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I will say Trevino's injury does seem a little concerning because it's an elbow one. So I genuinely don't know if the Yankees will be seeing him this year. Um, but, you know, Brewer has some run. He's going to get some run. You know, it's not like he's the only guy in the bullpen who has question marks about their long term future on this on this roster. So, you know, it, it's going to come down to just if he pitches well. If he pitches well, he'll, he'll stay around uh, and not pitch as well as in, you know, zero ERA in a 16 nothing game. I mean, you know, the Yankees call him in. And even if they're up, you know, even if they're down two runs, you know, just hold, throwing up a zero um, and doing so with some strikeouts and not walking too many batters, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll stick around. The Yankees, the Yankees love their sliders and he's got a slot, good one. So I, I think the, that he's going to have some run. He's going to get a chance. It's just a matter of taking advantage of that opportunity. Absolutely. But guys, that kind of wraps up talking about Colton Brewer tomorrow. Obviously, we have a game at four o'clock. So we'll be here in the morning to give you the breakdown on Clark Schmidt, our expectations for him, uh, kind of who's going to be in the starting lineup. I, I imagine they probably drop it in the afternoon at some point. So maybe we'll have to do two short episodes and kind of break things down or we'll just wait until they drop the lineup, which usually is like for a 4 p.m. game, maybe like 11 or 12. 
probably around that time. So we got you guys covered on that. And it's going to rain tomorrow in New York. So I think they'll be fine. It's supposed to stop at about one o'clock. So I don't anticipate there being any, you know, significant delays or even canceling the game. They'll pull the tarp out. Should be fine. Um, we should be good to go for the 4 p.m. start time. And hopefully we can get our second one of the season with Clark Schmitty on the mound. We're excited about it, but also a little worried, which we will talk about tomorrow. Uh, a little bit concerned there. He's had a kind of up and down spring training, but he's got that new cutter that's looking really, really good. And when he's on, the kid is fire. He's he's nasty. And he, hopefully we get that version of him Um on the second day of the regular season. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe as always for everyday Yankees content. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.